to Nazis. It's going to be an interesting six weeks in Geelong. Josephine Cafania reporting there. Well, if you hadn't noticed, the humble bike has been undergoing something of a revival in recent years. Last year, there were more than one and a quarter million new bikes sold in Australia as more and more people turned to cycling for exercise and recreation. But as Victoria's roads and public transport systems strain under an ever-increasing load, we're being encouraged to see bikes as an alternative for the daily commute to work. Thousands of Melburnians took to their bikes this week as part of National Ride to Work Day. And authorities are hoping a new approach will help keep them in the saddle. Matthew Stanley reports. About 77% of all commute trips in Melbourne are by a, a single driver. It's not an illegitimate activity, but it's one that we've got to discourage. What bike riding can do is get back some road space, get back some seats in the tram, make some space on the freeways. But it's not about having a contest between different types of uh, commuting options, it's about providing people with real choices. When the City of Melbourne floated a plan to create a new bike lane on St Kilda Road, Victoria's Roads Minister was quick to squash the idea, saying any reduction in road space for cars on one of the city's busiest traffic arteries was unacceptable. Ever since, Tim Pallas has been trying to shake the impression that he's pro-car and anti-bike. I'm a great fan of bikes and uh, some of my best friends are bike riders. By his own admission, the minister is himself only an occasional cyclist. But this right. week he put himself in the saddle, experiencing first-hand the lot of the bicycle commuter. Need to avoid the uh, swoopy magpie. Magpies aren't the only hazard. The route from Williamstown to the CBD is typical of the city cycling commute. A mix of dedicated bike path and roadside bike lane with some sections of open road. This is a tricky bit. If we are going to make it a legitimate form of commuting and not just an activity for uh, the heroically fit, let me put it that way, then we've got to do it in a way that people don't feel confronted. They feel that uh, uh, they're not taking their lives in their hands every time they decide to, to do the right thing by the environment, by themselves, by the transport system. After years of what Bicycle Victoria calls organic growth, plans are underway for a dramatic change in approach. I think we've got to do less, not more, when it comes to identifying the principal bike network. That is, fewer routes, but do more in terms of ensuring that those routes are connected. The idea is that by giving cyclists priority on some roads and cars on others, everyone's life can be made easier. So then it's a matter of working around the clock face of the CBD and doing those sort of deals. It's not going to be one climactic or, or cataclysmic event where we'll say, well, here's the map and here are the priorities. It's a, it's a work in progress. The government says it's too early to say which roads will be chosen to serve as principal bike routes. But Bicycle Victoria has already submitted its wish list. We're not going to get it everywhere we want it, but what bike riders can look forward to, and those who want to be bike riders, is a series of separated routes into the CBD, radiating out five kilometres from the CBD. While the horse trading continues, there's another project in the works that could add thousands more bikes to the inner city network. JC Decau is one of two international companies lobbying the city council for the right to provide low-cost rental bikes in return for advertising space. Melbourne would be one of the most suitable cities for it given the, the nature of the geography there and, and uh, there is a number of dedicated bike, bike lanes there. I think that the popularity of cycling there is, is growing at, at a tremendous rate. It's a concept already in place in nearly a dozen cities across Europe. They've you know, been in Paris for a couple of months and they're going gangbusters. Users pay a nominal fee to sign up and can then pick up a bike from stations set up at regular intervals around the city and return it to the point closest to their destination. We're talking in the thousands, not just the hundreds, to have the system really popular. Um, and I think that uh, whilst the, the, um, the, the concentration would be in the, in the CBD, we would be looking to appeal to a broad range of, of audiences, the commuter audience, for example, and obviously that would require the bikes being located in, at least in the suburban fringe. Opinions divided on the value of the scheme. 
Bicycle Victoria says it's more about changing attitudes than seriously reducing inner city congestion, serving as a sort of symbolic salute to the personal and community benefits of pedal power. It tells a great story about what it's like to live in the city. As our roads become choked with traffic and with trains and trams bursting at the seams, it's a story that could do with a happy ending. If we had 10-20% uh, of people getting to the CBD by bikes, that would save a lot of money and make a lot of people happy. Matthew Stanley reporting, and that brings us to the end of Stateline for this week. Thanks for joining us. You can read transcripts from the program or send us an email via our website. And we'll be back next Friday after the news. See you then.